Hello everyone, you're listening to the Socially Desi Show, the podcast that motivates you to live, create and inspire. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is a special edition of the Socially Desi Show where we discuss tips and strategies with our guest speakers on how to tackle problems related to personal growth, mental health, relationships, entrepreneurship and health and fitness. So hit that subscribe button and go check out our website at sociallydesi.com for more of such content. Today I have two special guests on the show. Mr Anil Bhandari and Chef Devendra Kumar. Mr Anil is the chairman of AB Smart Concepts and chairman organizing committee of the Indian Culinary Forum. Chef Devendra Kumar or lovingly called as Chef DK is the vice president F&B production and executive chef at Le Meridian Hotel. He is also the president of the Indian Culinary Forum. Hello gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you Anurag. Thank you Anurag. It's a pleasure to be hosting you both on the show today. So, uh, I mean, it gives me immense pleasure that you guys are here on the show. And first of all, uh, congratulations on the successful completion of the 17th Annual Chef Awards. So, big congratulations on that. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'll start off uh, with this episode uh, with Mr. Anil. Uh, uh, Mr. Anil, uh, to our audience who are not aware about you, why don't you tell us about your journey and how this whole collaboration with uh, Chef DK started for you? Okay. Uh, first, you want to know about my journey. My journey is a very big journey, which is start from 1969. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm completing 51 years. Uh, in brief, I will tell you. I yeah. started uh, from the... I was a graduate of the Pusa Institute of Hotel Management. Mm-hmm. I joined India Tourism Development Corporation as called ITDC, the Ashok Group of Hotels, in way back in 1969. And uh, I finally ended up as his chairman and managing director. I joined as a management trainee and ended up as a chairman and managing director of the company, wow. and which wow. I was heading from 92 to 97. Mm-hmm. And during that tenure, my single objective was to turn around this company, which I very successfully did. The company resulted into over 78 crore of a net profit and paid dividend to the government over 24%. It was considered to be one of the best uh, uh, in the new Ratna companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a very successful tenure and then we managed to also do disinvestment in the company as was the objective laid by the government. And 10% of the equity of that time was uh, laid back which was mm-hmm. taken over by the Taj Group of Hotels. So wow. that is the wow. journey which we had with the ITDC. Thereafter, I was working with the ITC hotels as an advisor, travel, tourism, and real estate. And thereafter, I also worked with an American company called Interstate Hotels, setting up their hotels division in India. Mm-hmm. Some I worked as a managing director for Hotel Corporation of India. I worked for JHM Interstate of Hotels for India. Oh, it's a big, long journey. And during <laughs> this journey, I have been on the various uh, association, industry forum, and uh, the God of Grace got a lot of awards and a lot. I'm uh, presently the chairman of AV Smart and Concept, which is working towards uh, facility planning, feasibility studies, and also helping the new entrepreneurs to start up hotels. Interesting. And with the ICF, mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. I had a passion. I used to look after, you know, working at Santu Juvo Hotel when I was the managing director. I used to watch and see that all the artists in the country were getting various kinds of awards. Unfortunately, it was not in the hospitality industry. So right. I, saw, I saw that, you know, why should not the hoteliers and the chefs should get awards, you know, because there's nothing like that which is happening in the country. It was way back in 74 or so. So first, we instituted the Hotels Award, which okay. was way back. And subsequently, when in 2004, I was in Delhi. And uh, that time, I met the Indian Calorie Forum. The Indian Calorie Forum was headed by... Chef Tavinder and many other colleagues. Mm-hmm. And we thought of starting off the Chef Awards. The whole objective of starting these awards was to awarding excellence, honoring chefs, 
and encouraging more people to join this profession, especially the ladies. So we have a special award for the ladies. I'm right. delighted right. that chefs who are working behind the scenes are all now in the forefront. Earlier, you could see chefs who are always behind the scenes because they were working in the kitchens. Right. Only food right. and beverage manager or food and beverage assistant managers or the captains used to be those who were taking orders and then and chefs were in fact if you see they were not allowed to be in the uh, restaurants in some hotels true true, true. so this got changed by uh, doing these award everything got changed all the back of the house people those who were doing such hard work laborious standing in front of the oven came in the front and today they are in the front they are leading the show we have forgotten about food and beverage managers chefs are hard working people they are the real people those who look after the health and wellness of the people so true so true i mean uh, so uh, chef uh, dk uh, i would like to put this question forward to you uh, like uh, mr anil said right uh, the chefs earlier were uh, at the at the you know back office kind of a place where they are in the kitchen and managers are in front and they are managing all the clients so you started your career back in 1972 with the obrai group so uh, why don't you tell us about that and how how was your journey um, and how do you look at this whole uh, icf journey of yours and like uh, anil sir said about uh, now chefs being uh, you know at the forefront and heading this whole a uh, space where uh, they are recognized for their efforts uh, not just in the kitchen but also the whole experience of a customer when somebody sits and you know enjoys their meal so please please tell us about your journey thank you and rock first of all uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this the socially this show i'm truly delighted and excited to speak thank you so much well uh, i like uh, mr anil bandari i've i've had a great journey long journey next year i'll be completing about 50 years in the industry so uh, after uh, completing my graduation from delhi university i was looking for a professional course that was the time that i was introduced to hotel industry mm-hmm. and i chose this culinary profession because at that particular time in 70s there was a transformation taking place in in this uh, field especially in the culinary field you know mm-hmm. because uh, uh, this was earlier dominated by you know those masters you see when we joined so uh, quickly i'll run through i joined this uh, kitchen management training program way back in 72 after spending a year at the oberoi continent hotel daily mm-hmm. so uh, did my uh two years plus three years specialization and uh, i was sponsored for a intensive training in france where i worked with the uh, uh, best chefs of france for two years and uh, specialized because uh, there's you know the french cuisine gave me the the best foundation you know as one says is mother of all cuisines being came back and uh, held various job positions with Ubroy group of hotels in india and abroad and uh, had the opportunity of uh, hosting many food festivals and uh, during my stay with the broys i was uh, nominated to participate uh, in international culinary uh, competition mm-hmm. in in japan way back in 1983 where okay. only 14 country chefs had participated so uh, we i represented in india we won gold prize on uh, presentation of indian food so uh, uh then i joined uh, 1985 the upcoming french property the name lemridian which was the first hotel coming up mm-hmm. i joined during uh, it was at a finishing stage so it was a very challenging because the entire journey has been amalgamation of a lot of hard work challenges positivity and uh, you know drive to move forward mm-hmm. now uh during this period uh, during this journey i had the you know privilege of uh, you know uh, uh, writing uh, a couple of books you know about uh, 
four books have already been uh, published. Fifth one is uh, under process. Sixth one is under process. Mm-hmm. And uh, over the years, I have had the opportunity of sharing dias, being the president of ICF with the uh, cabinet ministers, mm-hmm. and uh, have been uh, honored with many awards, including National Tourism Award as best chef of India by Ministry of Tourism and Delhi Ratan and so on and Golden Hat, etc. So it's been a very, very successful journey overall because the time I joined this industry as a chef, this profession wasn't so much recognized, as I said. So true. Masters were there. The ratio of uh, educated versus, uh, 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 you know, those masters, I wouldn't call them military chefs. Mm -hmm. I'll call them master craft chefs whose generations had been into this industry. Right. But but they lacked, you know, academics, you see. So True. that's where we came in and we took over, as Mr. Bandari just now said, that uh, it was tough initially to sustain in this industry when chefs were not willing to disclose their uh, secrets, you see, because that was their <laughs> asset. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, they said, I will not share. So yeah. when we came into this industry, there was a transformation, you know, from 50 years. Today, there is a sea change, you know. As yeah. Mr. Bandari very rightly said, the time I joined, I was questioned as a chef, what the hell I was doing in the lobby. Mm. Today, I I I'm invited to meet the guests in the lobby. The the reputation of the chefs have drastically changed. We are the dear the decision makers now in the hospitality industry. We are the face. We are the face of food and beverage. Chef is a face of the food and beverage. Chef is a decision maker. Chef is an ambassador of uh, of the hotel. So there is a total. Senior chain today we have MBAs and you know BBA all those qualified people who have joined this industry because of the tremendous growth. True. So 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 I would say that and then of course uh, I was elected as president of uh, Indian Culinary Forum in two thousand. It's mm-hmm. I've, I've completed 20, 20 years in this uh, as a as a president and. Uh, have uh, truly worked towards, uh, uh, you know, Im- you know, improving image of uh, chefs in the industry. You know, making right. ICF as a ICF as a brand. We have more mm-hmm. than two thousand uh, chefs today as members, and we 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 have uh, you know we have established ourselves. And uh, uh, my journey in France was because I spoke French because I'm the only chef in the country. Mm-hmm. So far, uh, that I can read, write, and speak French, you know, which ultimately helped me because my forte was French cuisine and has been there. So I think it should be it's it's a it's a great uh, journey, very successful journey. Of course, there's no end to learning; one so continues true. learning. That's so it. true, so true. Uh, so, Chef, you said uh, there are uh, around 2,000 chefs which are part of the ICF. Uh, so, is, is there uh, some sort of a uh, induction process that they go through uh, while being the part of the organization? You see, every uh, every uh, chef or junior chef has to make an application. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, predefined uh, criteria. The application is put up before the ICF presiding and we 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 approve the uh, membership, and then it's a lifetime membership. And mm-hmm. there are various privileges given to uh, to the members. You see, and uh, because th- you see, these platforms were never existing uh, during our times. You see, right. such platforms were not there. So so, uh, uh, so there were no such platforms at all where one could uh, showcase their skills, exhibit their you know showmanship and uh, get rewarded. Yeah. So uh, as Mr. Mandari very rightly said that uh, the man behind uh, uh, these uh, 
chef award is none other than Mr. Nil Bandari, who who <laughs> who, who has a extra love for a, a chef's profession, and we 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 like see you. Somebody has to be there, you know, who pushes you, and so with true, uh, yeah. yeah, with this support and blessing. Today, chefs' profession has rose up, of course, thanks to social media. Today, today, as I rightly mentioned that uh, during my twenty years of presidentship, I have shared dias with cabinet ministers and having interacted with them and spoke with them with. uh that's the biggest change today that chefs are right in the front as they were uh, you know five decades ago or four decades ago today there's no hotel i mean food and beverage runs with the name of the chef i can say with yeah you know right so true so true yeah i definitely agree with this that uh, in today's day and age uh, the name of the chef comes before the hotel and uh, it's really important that somebody like like especially with me also when uh, whenever me and my family we go out we definitely look at uh, the kind of cuisine uh, that the hotel serves and also the uh, the chef who is also part of the hotel so we definitely also look at that whenever we go to a very uh, boutique or a or a very uh, uh, you know good hotel that we want to go and eat out at so uh, uh, mr anil uh, this question is for you uh, what were the initial challenges when you uh, thought of this whole concept of uh, introducing the the annual chef awards uh, because uh, you know like you said uh, uh, icf was already headed by uh, chef tk at that point in time and when you introduced this concept uh, to him and you started collaborating on this concept what were the initial challenges uh, that you both faced well uh, the challenges were something to explain the chefs first mm-hmm. that why this culinary forum is there mm-hmm. so we had to Collect, uh, we have to make quite a few num- uh, members to this particular forum. Mm-hmm. We, we had to do a lot of publicity and advertisement and invite our chefs, talk to them in small groups so that they can become members. So having the becoming members, then we had to get nominations for the awards because you know people have to nominate for the award. Because in what we did was very simple formula. We prepared a rule book. or mm-hmm. to carry on with this particular chef awards we instituted 16 awards to start with okay golden hat chef a lifetime achievement award golden hat silver hat subsequently lady chef and there are chef of the year award and then there were master chefs with the indian continental oriental uh, patisserie a uh, bakery and so on and so forth and regional cuisines so we had these kind of award which get then you know the question was that we had put up a criteria that who can join hmm. even with so much of an experience and having worked chef for a number of years can only participate in this particular uh, award set okay so right. there was a little problem because our criteria was little higher than uh, and we could not find so many people to come into it right initially we had nominations close to 80 60 40 but we started subsequently it has gone up to 150 200 nominations which we continue to receive right so right that was one challenge the other one nothing other was nothing i mean getting sponsorship was yes there is another challenge that asking people to uh, contribute Hmm. So after that, convincing the sponsors because this will help them and the industry a lot. If more hotels and restaurant open up, many more chefs get created. You will see this industry will grow. So to get the sponsors on board was a little challenge, and this continues hmm. to be a challenge, especially in pandemic days. It was a big challenge to get <laughs> people to contribute to us because their businesses are also not doing too well. But somehow we managed. it is the fraternity which is very strong and they have an excellent relationship with their suppliers and hats off to chef devinder kumar and his team who so could manage to have a good a contribution from the sponsors perfect perfect so uh, chef nandita karan i believe won the lady chef of the year 
So, uh, Chef uh, DK, uh, tell us about uh, her and, you know, what was the cuisine that actually, uh, you know, made her win this? Okay, uh, before I had, I answer this question, may I add mm-hmm. to what Mr. Bandari said? Definitely, yes. You see, I could only say with pride that these are the only awards in the country which have sustained over 17 years. Only awards in the country. So, there are, as Mr. Matali said, there are stringent rating system. Very, very important. Mm. There is a total transparency. Because to build trust, confidence, and accept it in the industry, you know, you have to have a trust, you have to have a confidence, you have to have acceptance. Because anything you do has to be accepted in the society. Right. So luckily, those who have been the winners, have been awardees, they have been well accepted by the industry that if you go somewhere and you say, I'm the, you know, uh, Master Chef Award winner given by Din Kalari Forum. So that's, that is the image now built. And, you know, so today, this has become a brand today. People now know that it's an L1 event in the country. The only event, award event in the country is hosting annual chef awards. Mm-hmm. That was my point. And uh, uh, your question that uh, uh, this Nandita girl who won. Nandita see, Karan, yeah. Uh, Nandita Karan, uh, as uh, Mr. Bandari said, that one of our objectives is to encourage uh, uh, youngsters, including women, girls, to join this profession because there has always been a myth about the hotel industry but it has changed now the image. So through these awards, through these, uh, you know, uh, culinary demonstrations and all, we encourage. So uh, we there is a set criteria even for girls. We 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 have uh, we have thoroughly we had uh, a number of uh, uh, nominations in this category, and uh, the the uh, the marking is done based on their credentials. Uh, performance and uh, various achievements made. So uh, there is there's, uh, uh, no trade test conducted in this category, mm-hmm. whereas Master Chef categories there are trade tests. So here, these top categories, the the the, the selection as uh, uh, is done by top jury, okay, uh, which which consists of uh, you know uh, CEOs and managing directors and. Top, all top notch, including senior chef. Mm-hmm. So the entire team studies their credentials, you see, and the best of the best, whoever <clears throat> uh, achieves the max marks based on that uh, predefined criteria. Uh, uh, so this girl apparently is executive chef in a, a, a Lalit hotel mm-hmm. and uh, uh, has uh, done a very good job. And we, we found her because I've seen her uh, uh, culinary skills also because she was, I think she hosted one of the culinary demonstrations. So you you you, you look at her, the potential as well. You know? Right. So I think uh, she was well deserved. She 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 met uh, with all our requirements. So I think, uh, I mean, I, I would uh, uh, say she's one of the finest uh, uh, lady chefs today and uh, will do very well in time to come. No, definitely a very congratulations to all the winners of uh, the 17th Annual Chef Awards. We would definitely be uh, putting down their names and the categories that they won in. Uh, so now I would like to shift uh, both of your attention to a very serious topic, uh, which is around this whole impact of COVID on the hospitality industry. And uh, so first, I'll start off with your own awards, right? So, uh, Mr. Anil, can you tell us uh, what was the uh, major challenges that you faced uh, while organizing this award uh, award this year? Well, uh, we discussed within the organizing committee, some of the members thought we should not have awards. Hmm. And the others thought, yes, I was a driving force. I pushed everybody. I said that the 
with the changing times and the changing scenarios, we must change. Yep. Okay. So let's make it as a digital awards. Let's mm. go on online. So we had the chef summit online and partially the chef award took place physically as well as an online. For your information, we had for 20 days immunity building recipes which were being cooked by the chefs from their home okay. and being relayed, right? There are 20 very, very eminent chefs like Har- Harpal Suki and then Chef Gautam Chaudhary and there are quite a few of them which you can name. Mm-hmm. We had their chef uh, uh, Basim from uh, Leela. Quite a few of the renowned chefs made those recipes and they were relayed uh, on the Facebook, mm-hmm. right? So, we found solutions because you cannot just stop anything. I personally feel these kind of problems will come in life, but you cannot say that we will not do it. I mean, you have to have the courage to do it. As a manager, you need to find solutions. Obstacles will be there in life. Right. And so we said, we will not. The awards will happen. So everybody decided they have to, will happen. And we worked out the ways and mean how they should be carried. So true. So true. And uh, also, uh, because of this whole pandemic situation, you know, tourism has taken a big hit. And because of this, uh, a lot of the uh, hoteliers have faced issues uh, with respect to their, uh, you know, uh, bookings and people coming in. So, you know, what sort of an impact have you seen uh, across the industry? And uh, how do you feel that we can cope up with this and recover the losses in the next couple of years? The COVID-19 outbreak, has triggered a crisis unprecedented in nature, mm. the scale and unlike anything we have seen in our lifetime. First time in the history of mankind, the hotels and restaurants were closed for such a long time. So you true. know, generally when a hotel is open, when you inaugurate a hotel, you used to throw the key out so that nobody <laughs> should close it. That was yeah. a, you know, a very normal thing that hotel should get never closed. It's the first time that the hotel has been locked. You know, that's what are the impact. I personally feel, I personally felt that this crisis is bound to change the course of life dramatically. Because it is closed now, so we need to find solutions. So it has challenged us. And in the our prevailing system, beliefs and practices, in view of this major upheaval, it will give a birth to a new world order. Hmm. We all realize that we need to discard all outdated systems, adopt new ones. We also need to evaluate our priorities. What was this COVID about? Yeah, if you look at it, there were three major things. Sanitation, hygiene, and social distancing. Yeah. See, sanitation, hygiene, uh, we all in the culinary world or as well in the f and industry or in the hospitality industry, we are taught how to maintain the best of the standards of sanitation and hygiene. But and since this pandemic had created so much of fear, we had to update, come with modern technology to protect our associates, those who work with us, mm-hmm. also our guests, those who are going to serve. So it was a challenge to have both of them to be protected. Right? Yep. Social distancing, yeah, that's an easy job. Social you keep. And then you have to work with few. Yeah. The other biggest challenge what happened was that quite a bit of our labor, those who were working with us, when the hotels were closed, went home. And quite a few were laid from the hotel. Means there was no job. So obviously they were asked not to come for three months, six months, seven months. Quite a few hotels. Staff was asked to not to come in. Few hotels, they were still working because they had some guests and some people were looking after the quarantine guests. Yeah. And some of our hotels were very generous. They started producing meals for the all the migrant workers as well as the frontline warriors, the doctors and others. They looked after them. So this is the, you know, see the human part of a fish chef. Chefs are very, very human people. Hmm. You know, it's that we should help. We should go and do all this. In spite of the COVID being at such a high pay, they risked themselves, came to the kitchen, started cooking food, and then distributed. Distribution was another challenge. Yeah. Because you are doing across lots of people. It's not an easy job. But 
they took that challenge and did it. Hmm. The impact of this entire business in the restaurant industry is such, it is estimated that today even 25 of the restaurants may shut down permanently. Hmm. True, true. And result is an approximate of a loss of 66,305 crores. You can well imagine. Yeah. That's huge, yeah. 40% of the people, those who are losing jobs, sorry, 40% of the people losing jobs, and the quite a 50% of them have getting salaries which are 50%, 40%, 30% reduction in their salary. Yeah. That's what happened. So you can imagine it's very difficult for them to live. See, young boys who have just started a career, they don't have saving. They bought a new car, you bought a new telephone, they have to pay the EMI, and now there's no money coming to them. How do they survive? So that's the biggest challenge for people. In order to overcome all this challenge, the hoteliers even thought, it's okay, we'll start calling people on alternative days. Mm -hmm. Because hoteliers, because the owners don't have money at all, because they have no income coming, how do they survive even? Right? Yeah. The financial of the whole hotel is not too good. A lot of hotel like those who came during Commonwealth came had taken loans. Okay. Amounting to 350 crore and they had to pay, you know, uh, interest every month of 2 crore, 2 and a half crore. There was no income, so how could they? Yeah. Government had only postponed this interest, but after 6 months they have to again pay. Where will this money come from? So they had to lay off people they have asked not to come. Subtly, some hotels, what they did was, they started calling people on alternative days so that at least people will get some money. All the workers, those are there, they can survive. Hmm. The present condition is still very bad. And I can foresee, I can tell you, this will continue to be there till 2023. Hmm. If vaccine comes or not come, if the vaccine comes, great. But still, this situation will not improve. So what are we supposed to do as chefs and what are we supposed to do as managers? The only thing, solution I personally think is, since this pandemic is uh, this virus which impacts the body, we need to make ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally very strong. We need to improve our immunity levels. We need to improve our health. We need to exercise. We need to have good nutritional food. And for chefs, they have to create nutritional food and give it to all the other people, those who visit their restaurants and so on so forth. That's a responsibility the chefs have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Second, for the mental health. Because with EMI is to be paid with other stress which they have been built they have to maintain a mental balance, which is very important. They should not get disheartened in any way. They need to be emotionally also very strong because in the house, the wife, the children, those who cannot afford few things and the things are becoming expensive, they have to emotionally keep them also very happy and delighted and more so also their associates, those who come on duty. And there is always a fear. If I go out, meet so-and-so, if I go to buy certain goods, I might catch. The fear is killing the people. Yeah. So in my physical health, mental health, emotionally, you need to be very strong. Hmm. And Indian cuisine has a lot to offer. Yep. If you look at Indian cuisine, this is the best food which you can have, which brings the immunity level very high. Hmm. Keeping all these factors, just to go back onto the subject, we thought of having these immunity building recipes being displayed so that we can educate people at large. Right. What to do, how to overcome this problem hmm. during this pandemic. I mean, for those of us, the general public, it was on the Facebook, over lakh and 60,000 people. And now we have requested the Ministry of Tourism to print books or create DVDs which could be circulated across the world. Mm hmm. And you can imagine the impact of this was that Indian spices, which are immunity builders, you can go in now in New York, they're taking turmeric coffee, turmeric has become so popular, turmeric milkshakes are being made. 
yeah turmeric the putting in the tea also likewise black pepper is being used mm-hmm. so india has ayurvedic system indian spices have really are strong immunity builders india has a opportunity to become number cuisine number 1 in the world mm-hmm. if the ministry of tourism takes this opportunity and promote it right i feel that ministry is just keeping quiet the government is keeping quiet it is the time for you to go and promote it on the social media blast it convey to so everybody true. all these recipes which have been cooked can be put on the social media and ministry of tourism to various uh, channels promote the things and then the indian cuisine become very popular because everybody looking forward to it no mm-hmm. so true i don't think there's a giloi it helps you in building your immunity so all these things are available in india yeah so it is high time our view of mm. 5000 year old history there is a need to explore research and promote all these india's diverse traditional recipes and cuisines so true so true uh, so uh, chef dk uh, tell us more about these uh, immunity building dishes that you uh, you know ask the chefs to make during the uh, annual chef awards uh, a few of the highlights if you can share with us and with our audience i would certainly say that i would uh, from a chef's perspective you see uh, just to further add what mr bandari said that uh, uh, these challenging times during these challenging times uh, chefs also had to change their mindset to see and uh, the the first thing which comes in your mind is uh, the accepting the present position and uh, working towards a better future although a lot uh, has been said uh, by mr bandari mm-hmm. but before that i will answer a question you see you see our uh, food is is uh, uh, has rather a uh, lot of immunity boosting uh, 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 you see the elements when right. it comes to uh, spices you know that's why uh, they say you know indians hindustanio mein badi wo hai immunity to face any kind of virus yep. that's one reason today you find so many people on the road without uh, following protocols you see mm. that's one of the reason you see uh, so having said that i think uh, uh, one of the key uh, uh, thing which as a chef of course there are number of uh, uh, that uh, points that we are going to be uh, focusing on one of them is that as a chef it is our prime duty to ensure that the food is healthy right right at no stage we should forego or neglect or ignore the nutritional value of the food therefore it is the prime our is a prime responsibility that we serve nutritional and sustainable food by adopting sustainable cooking methods food already has those medicinal you know those uh, spices whether it is haldi black pepper jeera if you actually see read about uh, each spice has a number of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, immunity boosting uh, yeah. you know properties but here the focus is going to be on serving uh, making food with uh, freshly grown produce Mm-hmm. focus on organic raw material food ingredients focusing on seasonal uh it, it's very very important you know today uh, you have almost everything today as chefs i have a tie with the, a farmer directly he sells me her uh, the lettuce he sells me all those seasonal vegetables i have my own herb garden at la meridia new delhi mm-hmm. where we pick fresh herbs and cook food so uh, you see the spices is there but using the right spice we should not you know over power the food 
to make it immunity um, boosting. You know, it's already has. We only have to make sure that those nutritional, uh, those nutrients are not destroyed during cooking. That, that's very, very important. It means if I'm cooking straight fire vegetables, vegetables must be cooked at the right degree. Right. Otherwise, you otherwise you kill nutrients. If you broil a meat to an extent that all spices are gone, you may have developed a taste, but what you are eating is not nutritious. So that that's very important thing that I would like to tell all uh, you know young chefs to make sure that the the there's something called uh, uh, smart cooking today. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's very that's where a lot of mistakes are done. That's why they say, you know, garka kara or professional food me kya farak hai. But <laughs> yeah. hai ki we overpower the spices. Yeah. There, my mother believed that the good food can be made with salt, pepper, and one or two more spices. You don't need a number of spices. But yes, there are preparations which, which require condiments. You know, our traditional uh, cuisine, you know, it's, uh, rests on, you know, like Hoglai cuisine or any other cuisine, whether it's cuisine of South, which which has a number of usual spices. So smart cooking ensures the food remains uh, nutritious. Those elements are not less. Yeah. Focus on fresh using technology in the right perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, don't use technology. To for convenience sake, for luxury. No, if you are, let's say, using a combi oven, mm-hmm. which has a, it's it's a it's a modern equipment in kitchen, which is vastly used. You mm-hmm. have steam and heat both. So it it is very convenient to cook. But if you overcook, you lose on the uh, the nutrient pan. So that that's the focus on that. I think uh, uh, our our uh, focus is going to be. Of course, following a protocol, mm-hmm. which is, as Mr. Bandari said, hotels have always been ensuring HACCP, uh, you know, compliance of HACCP. That means stringent, uh, you know, uh, systems to ensure food safety because virus, this virus doesn't spread through food. What is our focus is, of course, we maintain uh, cleanliness, uh, hygiene, everything, but social distancing, three things have become very essential today. Washing of hands, wearing mask, wearing headgear, and distancing. These four things are new as part of the new normal. So, so having said that, so uh, uh, our, sorry, I'm just add uh, a few more lines to it. Sure, sure. The, 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 uh, uh, in our own uh, set up in hotels. I think there's going to be a focus on uh, live cooking, small portion, small plates. So that because it is our, as chef, it is our prime responsibility to ensure minimal wastage. That's one of the very important thing which we must keep in mind to, to take care of those, you know, hungry people. Mm-hmm. That's one. At the same time, help the environment. Right. So small plates is one. Interactive case cooking is going to be there. Portions are going to be mini, mini portion. That's mm-hmm. the focus. Menus are going to be smaller. The menus are going to be more based on fresh and seasonal produce. Mm-hmm. Right. There's going to be a lot of interaction between chef and the chefs have to go onto the floor because today, post COVID, it is that the the concern, the fear, that that the confidence you have to build when Anurag is coming to a restaurant. What does he want post COVID? He wants safety. Yep. He wants food to be cooked in a uh, in a safe and hygienic uh, environment, and food should be fresh so that he remains healthy. That's it. So uh, uh, that's as a chef. That's what we are cooking. Focusing 
Hundred percent. I hundred percent agree with you, Chef, on this. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Anil, uh, Chef DK, uh, you know, beautifully portrayed uh, the responsibilities of chefs going forward. Uh, you know, in the kitchen, in the hotel environment, and making sure that the guests are, uh, uh, you know, being taken care of uh, with the utmost, uh, you know, concerns for their safety, for their well-being. Uh, what do you feel about the roads ahead for chefs with respect to their career and business opportunities? well now it is time for the chefs to think out of the box see you should not be thinking that my job is only in restaurants there are a lot of opportunities which exist for them in various other fields right so they have to think practically completely out of the box it is time for them to presently sitting at home even to innovate research prepare some new community building dishes which they can propagate through social media right and yep. through social media as when they become popular people will call them order them and swiggy and zomato can deliver they have a means to deliver now they can be i mean sitting at home can also do business it's not they have to work in hotel restaurants only to do that business the one other big opportunity which has also come up is they i can tell them is there is you know presently if you look at 100% business of food and beverage which is 4 lakh and 23000 crores mm-hmm. you know for your information the food and beverage business which was uh, in 2018 was estimated to be 4 lakh 23000 crores right or right. which 65% of the business was in the unorganized sector the unorganized sector what i meant was the street vendors the dhabas and others huh? 35% business is only in the restaurant segment i mean organized sector per se now the opportunity for the chefs is how to get uh, this portion uh, i mean part of the share of 65% into the organized sector yep very simple all these dhaba those people sit on that road are making tea somebody selling samosa somebody selling something which is very sanitation hygiene levels are not well maintained if you can refine improve create beautiful vans like an ice cream cart ha huh? yeah why can't it be a dosa cart and why can't it be an idli cart and why can't there be a cart just selling soups so you create those carts something so like, like a food truck ha uh, a food truck government has just permitted delhi government has just said that you can create food trucks hmm. right so there are different avenue and government uh, also are giving loans banks have started giving loans if they don't have the money they can take a loan and can work towards it the other business which i see is one of the opportunity which i see ready to eat food hmm. now you can partially cooked uh, the sikh kebab which by ready to eat which many companies such like itc mtr vipul godrej all these companies are making such food you have an avenue to go over there you create a new flavor they'll employ you right you suggest to them they will be happy to have you on the board now look at the food and manufacturing industry where you made biscuits dairy products ice creams and there's so many the chefs have to go over there and start working yeah. they have to look for jobs over there unfortunately they were restricting only themselves to restaurant it is better to look into such avenues also mm-hmm. then you find food processing industry if you look at the food processing industry which is also a very big industry presently it was valued somewhere close to you know 328 billion us dollar and is likely to grow to 535 billion dollar and government of india have realized that 40% of the food is getting wasted so why not i process it right and make it better and and uh, don't waste it so they started opening food parks with the ministry of food and uh, uh, in uh, preservation industry they have started making food parks so people have those avenues to go and work you can go and create different kind of preserves jam jellies and so many things which you can create in the still we don't find a good quality of a strawberry jam or a plum jam right. all this you can experiment at your home give with the idea find an investor 
and expand it. Ayurveda is another one which we were talking of immunity building. Now, Ayurveda food and Ayurveda food technology will be the another avenue which the Ministry of Ayush presently is researching on. Mm-hmm. You know, biscuit made out of ragi, bajra, right. yeah, mixed with some other uh, herbs could be very good for your calcium deficiency. It could be very good for your any other deficiency which you have or which can mm-hmm. bring you, remove your headache. It can remove your headache even. I mean, because these are all compositions which you produce. A good quality of tea, good coffee of coffee, something added to it helps you in clearing your throat. Ginger is a very good thing. If you have any kind of a cough or something, you can have ginger. A ginger yep. biscuits, ginger ice cream, ginger coffee, ginger tea. So there's so many opportunities which you have to now create and publicize through social media. Right. And, and start a business. One suggestion. There will be a failure. Don't get disheartened. Keep on experimenting. Keep on trying. You will certainly have a success. For your example, I give an example of one chef who succeeded in this our country, is Chef Sanjeev Kapoor. Right. He was working with me. He was a chef who used to work with me mm-hmm. in San Francisco Hotel. My challenge to him that every day he's supposed to give me a new dish. You cannot repeat. I used to have lunch and dinner. Okay? So he was supposed to cook a new dish for me every day. And then we will discuss during breakfast time whatever the corrections have to be done on that new dish. And mm-hmm. in the process, we started holding food festivals also with the hotel by with these old new dishes and see how public enjoys them. And he recorded and documented it. It created into a big repertoire of, of recipes with him. Subsequently, he came into the TV and started cooking. Right. Right. Now, he didn't stay there only. I mean, he saw his value. He started branding himself. And the money he earns to by branding and endorsing various food products. He earns quite a bit. Our chefs can also do likewise. It's an example. They can yeah. start certain products and cannot make a lot of money out of it. Right? Then what did he do? The Culinary New Academy has started. That's what hmm. I was only did yesterday. He just uh, launched his academy. Since he had a repertoire of all the books and everything which he had, he converted into an academy where he has the entire basic knowledge or information which is digitalized and kept with him, so which he's going to market. Then he saw that there are no good pots and pans to cook. And nothing has been standardized in India to cook on those pots and pans. He started another business of kitchen equipment. Yeah. Right? So all pots and pans under his brand names are there in the marketplace. He also started restaurants. So what I'm trying to convey is that chefs have to look, think out of the box, look for the opportunities and grab them. A lot of opportunities exist. It's only a question of be confident of yourself. Look into your strengths and go ahead and do it. So true, so true, 100%. Because right now in this day and age uh, where you have social media, you have YouTube, you have Instagram, I guess uh, chefs have, uh, you know, more avenues to showcase their dishes. And, uh, you know, fun fact that uh, during this whole pandemic situation, uh, the number of uh, chef channels that actually opened up on YouTube was uh, more than ever. So, I mean, uh, you see home cooks, you know, wives and young kids also opening up their own YouTube channel just to showcase, uh, you know, something that they made. It can be as simple as like a coffee that they tried or, uh, you know, a cake that they cooked. So, a lot of thing uh, uh, that is positive about this whole, uh, you know, outbreak of internet is that people are now not restricted, like you said, you know, uh, they are not restricted to just working in hotels. They can start their own personal brand like Sanjeev Kapoor did. Uh, so, uh, 
it's it's a great uh, opportunity i guess and uh, of course uh, there will be fla- failures down the line but uh, all we need to do is make sure that uh, we don't get disheartened by this whole fact and uh, make sure that everything uh, you know whatever happens in your life happens for a reason and we need to make sure that we are getting better day by day um, so before we uh, uh, end this episode uh, uh, there's a huge uh, announcement for all uh, the socially desi listeners uh, both of our guests have been gracious enough uh, to uh, give away a few of their books that they have written so uh, uh, mr anil bhandari uh, has a book called art of plating so he's giving away three of those uh, copies to uh, you know the lucky winners of our uh, giveaway contest that we would be organizing on uh, socially desi uh, as well as chef dk uh, you know has been gracious enough to uh, give away three of his books uh, so i'll start with chef uh, chef uh, uh, like quickly if you can talk about these uh, books that you are giving away to our audiences and then we'll uh, get back to mr nil yeah just uh, before i talk about books i had uh, something to share uh, with the audience you know like uh, uh, because everyone is talking about post covid covid post covid and uh, i just commented the other day in fact food has been celebrated during covid times yep anura uh, everyone has started they have celebrated food at home yep every individual every home if you talk as very rightly you said that they have tried down those i i to mm. which they have never ever heard of it through of course social media so food is something yep. which will never die as long as humans are on this planet right so as far as uh, opportunities are concerned it is a very short time because we will recover there will be a revival there will be a revival i'm quite confident yep. it is that one has to keep up that positivity be you know that enthusiasm should not die at all and you know believe in yourself is very important believe in and i have find no reasons that this profession will rise better than it was before because people are looking forward to it it's only a question of time and uh, uh, this industry will come back to its shape in, in no time i'm quite confident so talking about these uh, 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 books i've written a couple of books but uh, the four out of uh, my collection uh, i shall be you know passing it on to the winners the first book is uh, kebab chutney and breads right it's it's beautifully written uh then is the just kebabs <clears throat> celebration of 360 kebabs and one for a leap year this is the only book on the shelf uh, in the world mm-hmm. which has uh, 40% vegetarian kebabs and 60% non vegetarian kebabs wow. and uh, beautifully presented uh, so there is nothing that i have left behind which cannot be cooked as kebab that's one then is of course soups 200 quick and easy vegetarian and non vegetarian recipes for every season hmm. that's third then of course is four season salads easy quick recipes on salads dressings and dips including low calorie so the rest are under process so these four books which have been uh, uh, the, the beauty of these uh, recipes is i can say that uh, the way i have written recipes very easy to understand and to make because writing recipe is an art which everybody cannot do so uh, i have defined a uh, uh, method how to write a recipe you will find in these books if you know the methodology to write you can write any recipe in no time any dish in the world you can pen down in no time perfect so sure sounds interesting will. yeah and and what about the book uh, the art of plating uh, mr nil can you talk about that yeah uh, before i start this uh, about my book let me tell you something about the food and beverage industry which i missed in the previous no problem That yeah how, how large is this industry just for your information of the information of the viewers 
it is 27 times bigger than the film industry, Bollywood industry. Hmm. magnitude, this is the value of this industry. Huh? It is 4.7 times larger than the hotel industry. Okay. So this industry is a very large industry and has a lot of uh, scope. It is a sunrise industry. If you look at from the food preservation point of view, from the Ayurvedic food point of view, it is a sunrise industry. Yeah. So there are a lot of opportunities. Nobody should get disheartened. And you have a lot of opportunities to go forward. Now coming to the books. I had also written three books. One was on tourism in India and economic activity. The second book which I wrote was on the top chef, top recipes. And the last which I have written is the art, craft and science. A plating. Now, why plating? The Indian cuisine which we saw that, you know, people used to plate it well. I mean, it didn't look so attractive. So then I thought, why not I write this book and tell them how to plate the food. Generally, what happens, we eat with our own eyes. When the food comes to you, just look at it and you start saying, wow, because this is the eyes that you react. Then second comes the aroma. Then you say, wow, what a beautiful aroma. And then it is what it goes into your mouth and you feel the taste of the food. So what is important is how do you plate it. That is the most important aspect of it. So that keeping all that in view, I thought I should uh, write this particular book on art of plating. It has various chapters how to about color, about to shapes, about how to find different kind of a plates, how to cut, and how to display it so that it looks beautiful. Like, a, you know, you can have a film star or an any other person is, a lot of makeup is done that they look smart. Mm-hmm. How we have to make the food also look smart and beautiful so that people start smiling and then eating and enjoying. Yep. Yeah, that's so true. And Raga, I just had two things to add, if you allow mm-hmm. me to do that. Yes, yes, please, please. You see, uh, one thing I forgot to mention about this uh, uh, annual awards at which we host mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the knowledge summit which we've been hosting to impart knowledge amongst youth. That is our uh, one of the objectives. And the other thing is that uh, uh, Indian Culinary Forum has his own uh, magazine, the only a magazine, uh, chef's magazine in the country for chefs, by chefs called In- Incredible Chef. Okay. So, so uh, uh, 16th edition was unveiled on that day. That was one. Mm-hmm. And secondly is that uh, something very interesting that chefs uh, also uh, are committed to give back to society. So the entire proceeds of this uh, Charity uh, that uh, high tea which we hosted, you know, whatever, whatever we save uh, post event, it is uh, again, you know, contributed to uh, NGOs, you know, because we we have a uh, ICF Chef and Child Foundation mm-hmm. in the country, which uh, you know uh, works towards underprivileged children. We have called it Chef and Child, Chef and Child, Chef works for upliftment the, the the children. So with this objective and, you know, mission, we launched this and put seeds. This year we contributed one and a half lakh, 50,000 each to three NGOs. Uh, they can buy utensils, they can buy anything. Again, uh, uh, as commitment, our commitment to give up to society as chefs. That's a very noble cause, very noble cause by ICF. And uh, we, uh, as uh, part of Socially Desi, really uh, commend you on that. Because at the end of the day, like you rightly said, uh, it's all about giving back to the society. And in whatever, uh, you know, uh, fashion we can. uh, Because at the end of the day, uh, we live in a society, we are part of a society, so we cannot survive alone. So it's all about uplifting each other, trying to help each other in these unprecedented times. So, uh, I mean, it's a great initiative that ICF is taking and I really congratulate and, uh, you know, we would definitely would love to see... Uh, ICF grow and grow in their member list and uh, a lot of new uh, chefs uh, should join it and uh, there are a lot of my friends and uh, I'm sure a lot of our Socially Desi uh, 
members uh, uh, would would be you know uh, upcoming chefs or they must be you know very enthusiasts about uh, cooking so i'm sure this giveaway would definitely help a lot of them and uh, they would really enjoy this so guys again uh, if you want to be a part of the giveaway uh, make sure that you check out the links in the show notes below uh, it's on uh, sociallydesi.com/giveaway uh, we would definitely be putting this up as well as we would be putting links to uh, the annual chef awards uh, which happened this year as well as the uh, icf website so definitely have a look at that and uh, with that gentlemen uh, thank you very much for being on the show it was a pleasure having you and you have been a lovely guest on the socially desi show thank you anurag thank you anurag thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about indian culinary forum and the chef awards thanks a lot god god bless you stay safe So that wraps it up for today folks. If you like the episode, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and let's go viral. Remember our weekly podcast features episodes on personal growth, mental health, relationships, business and entrepreneurship and health and fitness. We would love to have Mr. Anil and Chef DK on our show again in the future to discuss more about the Indian hospitality industry. So, if you haven't yet done so, hit that subscribe button and go check out our website at sociallydesi.com. And as always, before I sign off, remember Life is black and white and everything in between.